Ah, <sighs> the wonderful world of Pokemon. Full of sweet sounds, serene sights, and a whole lot of excitement. Pokemon is a world like none other, as it houses hundreds of different creatures that each have their own story. They each have something that makes them stand out. If you aren't a fan of a specific Pokemon, there's somebody out there who loves it. And if you love a Pokemon, somebody else hates it. Over Pokemon's 21 years of existence, we believe we have seen so much, but there is still something more. Pokemon has a way of taking you on a journey and keeping you on that journey. A determined quest that will lead you down a road to greatness. And that journey might lead you to another, and another, and another. What we're trying to get at is how the world of Pokemon that we all know and love has changed. Right when we thought Pokemon was at its peak, it kept going higher and higher. With every new twist and turn comes a beautiful ending. Every thought and idea gets mixed into something special, something fans can indulge in for hours upon hours. Whether it's the Pokemon video games, a Pokemon plush, or even the Pokemon trading card game, we fans are all connected by a unique, unique link cable. The world of Pokemon. Nobody can explain their intense connections to Pokemon. Everybody has their story as to how they got into the game, whether it was older siblings, or a Christmas present, or seeing the anime on TV. But the intense connection between that first Pokemon game, or especially that first Pokemon, many Pokemon fans have still carried this original piece. So, with all that said, let's take a look at how this great idea was turned into the gaming juggernaut it is today. Back in 1989, when the first Nintendo Game Boy was released, Game Freak developer and Pokemon creator Satoshi Tajiri first thought of the concept for Pokemon. Although at the time it was not called Pokemon, he still had a lot of the same ideas that would become the eventual games Pokemon Red and Blue. Tajiri enjoyed collecting insects in his youth, which is correlated to the main concept of Pokemon, catch Pokemon and play with them. From this childhood passion sparked the idea of Pokemon trainers, the humans who collected Pokemon and used them for battle and bonded with them as friends. Tajiri's hobby of bug collecting changed into a hobby of playing video games as he got older. He nearly failed high school due to his many cut classes in order to play games like Space Invaders. Inspired by his love of video games and his mentor Shigeru Miyamoto, the creator of Mario, he and his friend Ken Sugimori created Game Freak in 1989. This brand new developing company was given a date with Nintendo right away as they created Yoshi's debut game, Mario and Yoshi, in 1991. Tajiri was now keen on making a game based off of his childhood passion and the concept of collecting and battling creatures that he thought of during the dawn of Game Freak. After six years of development, in which Game Freak almost went bankrupt, Game Freak and Nintendo released Pokemon Red and Pokemon Green on February 27, 1996 in Japan. With a team of masterminds assembled, such as producer Shigeru Miyamoto, artist Ken Shigemori, and composer Junichi Masuda, Tajiri's idea was spun into one of the most popular entertainment franchises of all time. The name Pokemon is the Romanian translation of the Japanese word for Pocket Monsters. Pocket Monsters' incredible popularity got growing and growing and gave Game Freak and Nintendo no other choice but to release the games across the Pacific. They changed Pokemon Green to Pokemon Blue, and Pokemon Red and Pokemon Blue were released on September 28, 1998. American fans were immediately reeled in by the wonderful world of Pokemon, making the years 1999, 2000, and 2001 the time known as when Pokemon ruled the world. Everybody was playing Pokemon at this time, whether you were a 6-year-old kid or a 25-year-old. As time went on, the Pokemon anime was developed and released, as well as the Pokemon trading card game, which is commonly known as the TCG. The first anime episode released in Japan on April 1st, 1997, and in the US on September 8th, 1998. The TCG was first launched in October of 1996 in Japan, and in the US in December of 1998. At this point in time, Pokemon was dominating the gaming world, and with growing popularity and a sequel already in the works, Tajiri's creation of Pokemon was complete, and he was now set on one goal. Global gaming domination. Uh, as a brief aside, the following conversation is going to be based on the American games, with American releases and games being discussed, just so no one's confused. Pokemon Red and Blue gave us everything we love about Pokemon, as they introduced us to the world of Pokemon and the creatures and characters we love to this day. With Game Boy graphics and music engine, Game Freak was able to create a masterpiece of a game with the sources they had available to them. The artist team, Ken Shigamori, gave us our first looks at each Pokemon and the town in the Kanto region. Every little black and white pixel was given so much thought and effort in order to create the world we love. Musical composer Ken Shigemori was able to create such beautiful and masterful tracks in every single route in town. 
Every place in the Kanto region has a distinct look and sound that was presented to us in red and blue, but they left room for more development and improvement too. The Pokemon anime was also being loved by younger fans, so Game Freak opted to create Pokemon Yellow Special Pikachu Edition, another Kanto experience that closely follows the journey of Ash Ketchum. In this game, your starter is Pikachu, and you are able to catch most of the Pokemon that Ash owned, including all three of the Kantorian starter Pokemon. Aside from sprite changes and a few aesthetic changes, the game is very much the same as Pokemon Red and Blue. After the global success of Pokemon Red, Blue, and Yellow, Game Freak gave fans arguably one of, if not the greatest sequels of all time, Pokemon Gold and Silver. Gold and Silver introduced us to an all-new region known as the Johto region. 100 new Pokemon, new towns, characters, music, and most of all, a whole new adventure. You play as the main protagonist, Ethan, and have the ability to choose from one of three starters. Chikorita the Grass Starter, Sincadil the Fire Starter, or Totodile the Water Starter. You start your journey with yet another tree named Professor, Professor Elm of New Barktown, and set off to become the champion of the Indigo Plateau. The Generation 1 based Team Rocket returns to take over the Goldenrod City Radio Tower in an attempt to reach their leader Giovanni, who disappeared three years earlier, after the events of Pokemon Red and Blue. After stopping Team Rocket yet again, you make your way to the Indigo Plateau and beat the champion Lance, who has taken his spot back as champion after Red disappeared. After becoming champion, you are introduced to the greatest Nintendo post game of all time, the Kanto region. At the time, Game Freak and Nintendo felt that Pokemon Gold and Silver would be the series' final entry, so they opened up the Kanto region for fans to explore. You can collect all eight badges of Kanto and visit all the same towns you did a couple years earlier. You are then notified about the mysterious disappearance of the Cantonian champion Red. You venture to Mount Silver, and at the summit you find the man himself, Red. He does not speak to you, but you challenge him to a battle. He houses the highest level team of Pokemon in the whole franchise, and in beating him, you will become the greatest Pokemon master of them all. Gold and Silver brought fans a ton of surprises and gave us many great new features. The games were released for the Game Boy Color, giving fans the privilege of enjoying the world of Pokemon in color. Game Freak also added the day-night cycle in which the game's time correlates with real lifetime, making the game feel a bit more realistic. The day-night cycle also led to the introduction of nocturnal Pokemon, as some Pokemon could only be caught during the night, while others could only be caught during the day. The music is greatly composed by Junichi Masuda yet again, as he creates new and great music using the same engine as the previous game. Another new feature, which is now a mainstay in the Pokemon franchise, is that each game is based on a certain legendary Pokemon, gold being Ho-Oh and silver being Lugia. Towards the end of the game, you have the opportunity to catch these legendaries and add them onto your Pokemon League team. These games evolved the previous entries, and showed fans that Game Freak was ready to make each new game more innovative than the last. Fans were also snuck a third edition of Generation 2 in Pokemon Crystal. Crystal was very similar to Gold and Silver, as Yellow was to Red and Blue, but gave us one main feature. You now had the ability to play as a girl protagonist, who was known as Chris. The game's side story is running into the legendary beast Suicune throughout your journey and eventually you are able to catch it as your legendary partner. A few years later, Game Freak and Nintendo announced a whole new duo of games that would take place in a whole new region and on a whole new handheld console. Game Freak gave us Pokemon's third generation, Pokemon Ruby and Pokemon Sapphire, which take place in the all-new Hoenn region. Game Freak gave us completely different versions of Pokemon, as the graphics were completely revamped and the color was clean and crisp. You play as either Brendan, the male protagonist, or Mei, the female protagonist, and are introduced to the Pokemon world by yet another tree named Professor, known as Professor Birch, as you are moving to Little Root Town from the Johto region. You step out of the moving truck and are amazed by the beautiful and serene graphics and music. You could choose from one of three starters as usual. Trico the grass type, Torchic the fire type, or Mudkip the water type. Game Freak gives us another plethora of new features, as they can be more expansive due to the new engine of the Game Boy Advance. Ruby and Sapphire also created the weather cycle, introducing rain due to Hoenn being based off of a tropical island. In this game, there are two different evil organizations that are based on what version you chose. Each of these organizations is after one of the two ancient legendary beasts. In Pokemon Ruby, you go, you go up against Team Magma, who are after the legendary ground type Grodon, in an attempt to turn the whole world to land, and in Pokemon Sapphire, you go up against Team Aqua, who are after the legendary water type Kyogre, in an attempt to turn the whole world to water. And yes, those are the stupidest evil motivations in all of Pokemon, but that's besides the point. 
Your goal is the usual, collect eight badges, stop the evil gang from obtaining the legendary Pokemon, and catch the legendary and become champion. Pokemon abilities and natures were also introduced, making way to the present day competitive scene. Each Pokemon can have one of many different abilities and natures, which can each have positive and negative effects on the Pokemon. The music is absolutely incredible in these games, and is widely considered the best of the series. The introduction of tons of new instruments, with the trumpet being highlighted, and the Game Boy Advance's new sound engine, Junichi Masuda was able to create catchy masterpieces that make fans play with the volume all the way up. Game Freak gave us so much in Generation 3, and continued to implement more and more with each new game. A year later, Game Freak also gave us Pokemon Leaf Green and Pokemon Fire Red, which were just the first Pokemon remakes. These games were basically Pokemon Red and Blue, with enhanced graphics, music, battle, and gameplay. Every part of the Kanto journey was enhanced using the Game Boy Advance engine. These games are loved by many, and led to the eventual remakes of Pokemon Gold and Silver as well as Pokemon Ruby and Sapphire. So that's going to be it for part one of this documentary. Please subscribe to Game Domain News for part two. Don't forget to leave a like and subscribe, and as always, thanks for watching Game Domain. Hello, and welcome to part two of our Evolution of Pokemon documentary. If you didn't see part one, go check it out at our primary channel, Game Domain, and take a look. Now let's get on with the rest. In 2005 came Pokemon Emerald, which was the third edition of the Generation 3 Hoenn games. Emerald is very similar to its Hoenn counterparts, just as Yellow and Crystal were in their generations, but you instead faced off against both Team Magma and Aqua, and at the end you summon Rayquaza to stop the battle between Kyogre and Groudon. Post-game you are also given one of the greatest features in Pokemon, the Battle Frontier. Have fun spending hours battling in here. With the release of the Nintendo DS, Game Freak decided to give us another new world to explore. They introduced us to Pokemon Diamond and Pearl, which take place in the Sinnoh region. You can choose from Lucas, the male protagonist, or Don, the female protagonist, and another tree professor named Professor Rowan. Your starter options this time around are Turtwig, the grass starter, Chimchar, the fire starter, or Piplup, the water starter. You fight Team Galactic and stop Cyrus from draining the power of the three legendary Pokemon, Mispri, Yuxi, and Uzelf, in order to summon one of the two legendary Pokemon, Dialga in Pokemon Diamond, and Palkia in Pokemon Pearl. Beat the champions and you can catch a bunch of different legendary Pokemon, and through glitch exploits in the game, maybe even some mythical Pokemon. Pokemon Diamond and Pearl introduced us to even better graphics than before, and jazzy music with the new limitations available on the DS. Game Freak was able to expand on their ideas for Generation 3, and create what they wanted to be the ultimate generation. Every song in the game is filled with fun and excitement, and some towns and routes have different themes for day and night, as this game combines the day and night and weather cycles to create a realistic feel. After the praise of Diamond and Pearl, Game Freak was ready to develop a third version. They wanted to base this game off the elusive and powerful legendary Pokemon, Giratina, who was sent into the alternate universe by Arceus due to its disruptive behaviors. Pokemon Platinum's story follows closely to Diamond and Pearl's, but the ending is completely its own thing. You enter the distor Distortion World, the trickiest puzzle in Pokemon, and face off against Giratina, catching it if you would like. You go off and face the Pokemon League to become champion yet again. Fans were also given another remake during Generation 4, Pokemon Heart Gold and Pokemon Soul Silver. These games are considered the greatest Pokemon games of all time, as they take the greatest sequel of all time and enhance it like crazy. It shows fans the Johto adventure in a whole new way, whether it's the graphics, music, or the fan favorite feature that debuted in these games, walking Pokemon. Any Pokemon in the whole game could walk behind the protagonist along their journey. After the huge success of Generation 4, Game Freak gave us the first generation that was hated by the majority of fans, Generation 5. Pokemon Black and White took place in the Unova region, a region based off of the diverse landscape of the United States, from beaches to forests to plains and to big cities. Black and White's graphics were very similar to Generation 4, and the music was great as always. You play either as Hilbert, the male protagonist, or Hilda, the female protagonist. Professor Juniper, yes, uh, another tree, or at least a shrub, is the first female professor and gives you one of the three first companions. Snivy the grass type, Tipig the fire type, or Oshawott the water type. Take down Team Plasma and catch either Pokemon Zekrom in Pokemon White, or Reshiram in Pokemon Black. You will then become champion and can explore some inaccessible parts of the Unova on the coast. 
Instead of a third version to Black and White, Game Freak decided to recreate the story in the form of Pokemon Black 2 and White 2. You start off in a different town and as a different protagonist. These games are said to take place in the same timeline as Black and White, but when Unova is in a different kind of trouble. As either Nate, the male protagonist, or Rosa, the female protagonist, you are to stop Team Plasma from fusing together either Zekrom in Black 2 or Reshiram in White 2 with the legendary Kyurem. Capture the legendary and you can keep it fused or defuse it for two powerful legendaries to help you for your quest to be champion. With the launch of the Nintendo 3DS came Pokemon X and Pokemon Y, the first installments of the sixth generation of Pokemon. You play as either Kalem, the male protagonist, or Serena, the female protagonist, and choose between one of three starters. Chespin, the grass starter, Fennekin, the fire starter, and Froakie, the water starter. Your starter is given to you by Professor Sycamore. Yep, another tree. Uh, and your journey brings you to the feet of Team Flare, the evil villainous gang headed by their incognito leader, Lysandra. You are once again trying to stop the capture of the legendary Pokemon, Xerneas in Pokemon X, and Yveltal in Pokemon Y. After capturing the legendary, take on the Pokemon League and you will be crowned champion. There is basically no post game, but this game added a ton of new features. Fans could now indulge in a Pokemon world that was in 3D. Everything popped out at them and gave them the feel of being there in the journey. The competitive world of Pokemon was also popularized in this game, as it introduced Mega Stones and Mega Evolution, which gave fan favorite Pokemon a special power that makes them evolve to a more powerful version. Generation 6 also gave us a remake of Pokemon Ruby and Sapphire as Pokemon Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire. These games followed the same story as the originals, all the while enhancing the graphics and showing fans the Hoenn region in a new 3D look. But with the introduction of Mega Evolution, these games are said to have taken place in a separate timeline, almost like an alternate universe. The fans were treated with a great post-game, which included the Delta episode, as well as being able to catch almost every legendary Pokemon ever released, using the Eon Flute and the Latias Latios soaring features to venture to different and previously unexplored islands. These islands were home to portals created by the mythical Pokemon Hoopa, and legendary Pokemon came out of these portals. In 2016, Game Freak gave us the 20th anniversary Pokemon games, Pokemon Sun and Pokemon Moon. You play as either Sun, the male protagonist, or Moon, the female protagonist, and venture out into the tropical archipelago known as the Alola region. You have to take down the evil team Skull, which is based off of a real street gang. I mean, they got into the bandanas and everything. After taking down Team Skull and the Aether Foundation, headed by the evil Lusamine, you will free the world from the Ultra Beast invasion and be able to catch either Lunala in Moon or Solgaleo in Sun. Generation 7 gave us some new features, the main being Trials and Z-Crystals. This was the first reason, region in which gyms were absent and instead they were replaced with Trials. Each trial would reward you with a Z-Crystal, which then, when partnered with a move of its respective type, creates a super powerful move that dominates anything in its path. Generation 7 also gave us Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon, which may be the most unpopular Pokemon games yet. The fusion idea was brought back from Black 2 and White 2, and the two legendary beasts are now fused with a legendary Necrozma. The story is more centered on the Ultra Beasts, and there are a decent amount of differences. The Warp Ride feature was introduced, in which you ride on either Solgaleo or Lunala through Ultra Space and can travel thousands of light years in order to encounter legendary, UBs, and even increased shiny chances. So throughout Pokemon's 21 year history, there have been many new features and changes introduced in each new game, and we will now get to see what the Nintendo Switch can show us about the world of Pokemon. Pokemon's first entries on the Nintendo Switch were Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu and Pokemon Let's Go Eevee. The games were remakes of Pokemon Yellow, an enhanced version of Red and Blue based on the anime. They were made in an effort to ease the casuals that the smartphone sensation Pokemon Go brought into the main series. The Let's Go games were released worldwide on November 16, 2018 and managed to sell over 11.28 millions as of September 2019. The Let's Go games played differently from the other mainline games. The battle system was pretty much intact, but it was the catching mechanics that were tweaked. Similarly to Pokemon Go, in order to catch a Pokemon, the player would swing a Joy-Con or the Pokeball peripheral and motion controls would respond accordingly and the player character would throw a Pokeball. While it is possible to miss your target, the catching probabilities are more about the timing of your throw than where you threw the ball. Another way these games differ is on the overworld. 
typically, Pokemon games had the random encounter system where a Pokemon would jump out at you when walking around tall grass. However, Let's Go ditched that and made the creatures visible in the overworld, somewhat resembling the Dex Nav function in Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire to initiate a fight, the player simply has to get close to the Pokemon. Another series first was the addition of Co-op. Since Let's Go is able to be played with a single Joy-Con, you can lend the other one to a friend and play together. The second player can assist you in battles, and in the wild, if the two players throw their Pokeballs at the same time, the chances of capturing the creature are doubled. Depending on which versions you pick, your starter is either an Eevee or a Pikachu, which will always be on your player character's shoulder in the overworld. Let's Go also brings back a fan favorite feature in Pokemon being able to follow you around. First introduced in the yellow version, but only with Pikachu, and then expanded upon in the remakes Heart Gold and Soul Silver, this feature allows the first Pokemon in your party to appear behind you. Let's Go even allows the player to ride certain big Pokemon. However, Let's Go also removed the following gameplay elements, such as a night cycle, some moves, some items, held items, breeding, and abilities are absent from the games. Despite this, Let's Go was still a critical success, averaging an 8 out of 10 due to new gameplay elements and how easy to pick up it was. It was known before the release of Let's Go that the 8th generation of Pokemon games were in development, which hyped those who were not impressed by the Let's Go games. Those games would turn out to be Pokemon Sword and Shield, revealed to all on February 27th, 2019, with a release date due on November 15th. Sword and Shield are set in the brand new Galar region, which is based on the United Kingdom. To start your adventure, you will have the choice to choose between Grookey, the Grass Starter, Scorbunny, the Fire Starter, and Sobble, the Water Starter. The legendary Pokemon appearing on the box arts are Zacian for Sword and Zamazenta for Shield. To most, Sword and Shield are the first true mainline Pokemon games to release on home console. As such, a lot of hype was created around these games. While we are still unaware of everything they have in store, Game Freak has revealed a fair amount of new features. Unlike the Alola region of the previous generation, the Gym Leader system is back, and they are now set in big stadiums reminiscent of those used in football. The big new features of these games are the Dynamax and Gigantamax phenomenons. Thanks to an item called the Dynamax Band, every Pokemon can Dynamax and become a giant version of themselves, gaining a new set of moves. Certain Pokemon who Dynamax actually change their appearance and gain a new ability. This is Gigantamax, and it has been shown to be available to a select few old and new Pokemon alike. A controversial change has been the absence of the National Dex, meaning that the only Pokemon that the player can play with are those that appear in the Galar's Pokedex. This decision from Game Freak has been extremely divisive, and is the reason behind some fans' boycott of these new entries. On the bright side, the Galarian forms have been confirmed to be a thing with certain Pokemon like Farfetch'd, Weezing, and the Zigzagoon line. That last line had also introduced a new concept, which is that new evolution to alternate forms are a thing with the brand new Obstagoon. The wild area is a huge open space with different biomes where Pokemon roam free, which is also seen in more traditional routes, so that's something that was brought back from Let's Go. Max Raid Battles are fights against Dynamaxed Pokemon that can be done with friends through Nintendo's online subscription service or with assigned NPCs. Players would need to be careful as Game Freak confirmed that it was possible to encounter high-level Pokemon really early on in your adventure. Those are only the big features, as there are others such as Pokemon Camp and the Curry Mechanic, Pokejobs, and Ycom, and much more that we have yet to know about. Even with the absence of the National Dex, Sword and Shield look to be great new entries to the franchise. The Pokemon anime has always been important to the fans, as they love to join Ash Ketchum along his journey to be a Pokemon master. It all started with him getting Pikachu as his starter Pokemon, making Pikachu the most popular Pokemon almost immediately. This put Pikachu's face on everything Pokemon, and just about everybody and their dad has heard of Pikachu. Ash has come such a long way in his journey and has met a ton of new Pokemon and friends. Each region comes with different friends and new Pokemon, as Pikachu is the only Pokemon that Ash has kept with him throughout all of the episodes. There have been a total of 20 different movies, with number 21 coming in 2018, and each of them have connected with the fans. Pokemon, the first movie, impacted so many fans, and even got a bunch of fans into the games themselves. The movies and anime have evolved so much over the years, whether it's the stories, graphics, or music they always have a way to delight fans. And the anime does not get the credit that it deserves, as the anime is probably how at least 40% of fans got into the series, and which eventually led them to buying the games as well. 
Over the years, the anime has changed and impacted many fans, and everybody loves watching the kid from Palatown and his Pikachu. Pokemon merchandise is something that can be found in just about every fan's house. Whether it's a t-shirt, lunchbox, backpack, plush, poster, pillow, bedsheet, the list goes on. Over the years, there has been more and more Pokemon merchandise released, and the market still remains as big as ever. Nowadays, you can take just about anything and slap a Pikachu on it, and it will sell big. Nearly every single Pokemon has a plush of their own, and are each beloved by at least one person in the world. Kids even go to school with Pokeball backpacks, or a lunchbox with Charmander on it. If you walk into a Toys R Us, or maybe a Target, you can find a whole section devoted to Pokemon items. Nintendo knows how to sell things, and Pokemon is a big part of that. There are even foods that are made to look like different Pokemon. Pretty crazy, right? Nintendo has even sold some of their own consoles with special Pokemon editions. They've sold Pokemon Nintendo 64s, Pokemon inspired Game Boys and Game Boy Advances, Nintendo DS with Palkia and Dialga or the Sinnoh starters, and even Nintendo 3DS with X and Y or Aura designs. Some of these consoles are even the rarest Nintendo consoles ever. The bottom line is that the market for Pokemon merchandise is huge, and it looks to keep getting bigger and bigger. And then there's also the Pokemon trading card game, which has released hundreds of millions of packs worldwide and got so popular that they created a TCG online. Each pack has their own theme, and the cards keep getting rarer and rarer as the years go on. For example, an original Charizard card can be worth up to tens of thousands of dollars. People enjoy collecting the cards, and it is a big hobby in their lives. There are also international TCG championships, in which the game's greatest masterminds come together with their best decks and try to outsmart the others. The TCG keeps getting bigger and bigger as well, and the older the card, the more money it could be worth. Pokemon has changed so much over the years, and some fans like the change, and some don't. With the new Pokemon Switch title right around the corner, there are lots of changes expected to be made. Some fans are excited, and some fans are hesitant. They don't want the world they love so much to be ruined, or to be changed so much that it's like a whole different game. But either way, fans are still joined together by that special link cable, the love of Pokemon. So what did you think of today's documentary? How has Pokemon impacted your lives? Do you play Pokemon? And if so, how did you get into the franchise? Do you want to see more documentaries like this? Tell us in the comments below, and don't forget to like and subscribe. And we would also like to ask you to go and check out our new second channel, Game Domain News. GDN will be where we discuss weekly gaming updates and news, and if you like it, check it out and subscribe. We hope to see you next time, and as always, thank you for watching Game Domain.